students to give these lectures. And uh, these lectures are meant for students. And I'm very, though I'm very, very happy to see some uh, distinguished colleagues here in the audience. This is not for you. This is really basic thing. So this is, uh, so I hope you brought some work or some entertainment, and, uh, or feel free to leave any time. So the goal in this lectures is, at least in the fourth, first four, is to explain the following, the following, uh, I think, remarkable case. I mean, it's, 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 the results are not exactly new. They're, um, they're uh, close to 10 years old now. And this is, uh, and so this is, there's a remarkable insight of Nikrans Vashantashvili identifies the following things. So on the one hand, one can take uh, the quantum homology or K theory of, um, let's take this joint union from K to N of cotangent bundle to Grassmann variety that parameterize K dimensional subspaces of an N dimensional space. And so this is, so what this is, so this is here, this. This is just joint union of algebraic variety, so everything is going to be uh, just uh, independently. Every one of this will be not interacting with, with the other ones in any way. And so what this thing is, is um, this is a remarkable, this is associative, commutative associative. Commutative associative deformation. Um, of the ordinary cup product, they'll distinguish ordinary cup product in the cohomology of each one of these varieties. That depends depends on a variable. Z. Z. Uh, some, there's one complex variable Z, uh, so that at Z equals zero, you get the ordinary cup product and Z something deformation. And that uh, the fact that there is only one Z is because uh, there's uh, the second homology of this is one dimensional. So, we'll, so in general, there's as many variables as, as, uh, as the dimension of second homology here. And so what uh, Nikrasov and Tashvili say that this is the same as, uh, as a certain quantum integrable system, namely this uh, is a certain quantum integrable quantum spin chain. So I'll just write spin chain, some specific one. And what, uh, so it's a, it's a quantum integrable system, means there's a Hilbert space, vector space on Hilbert space. Uh, in some operator, so so the Hilbert space. Well, it's a system of quantum mechanics. So it, this is just um, so the uh, the state of the system is um, is a spin chain of length n, and it can have um, maybe I'll draw this. Uh, so it can have some spins down, spins up. So where the length, the length of this chain is n, and k is the number of spins up. In other words, in other words, this the Hilbert space is is an n-fold. So each one of this is uh, can be in two possible quantum states. So you take this two-dimensional space and you raise it to tens of power n. And k has to do with, this has to do with the weight. Well, it's not exactly the weight, but it has to do this number k. It has to do with the weight with respect to this SL2 
or GL2 action here. So this is how many times I use one chord and how many times I use the other chord. So in this Hilbert space, I have a remarkable operator. I call it energy operator. This is just, um, so I'll state it in cohomology. So this is something very simple. So how do I, so this is, this is essentially unique. This is, this is unique, unique possible, possible U2 or SU2 invariant. Uh, Invariant interaction. If I'd like of I if I'd like the nearest neighbors to interact, then there is um, in 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 SU two or invariant way, then it's, well the standard square the tensor square of S of C two is a U S U two S U two representation has two reducible components. So there are two operators. There's identity and one extra operator. Identity is not interesting, and the extra operator is just permutation of factors. So this is summation over all i. One goes from one to n, and I just permute i. So if I if I want to describe uh, eigenvector and eigenvalues with some operator, I'm free to add identity and I'm free to multiply by constant. It's not going to change anything. And up to this transformation, there is one and only way to, for nearest neighbors to interact. And you can ask, well, uh, <laughs> there's a variable z there. So what is, the, what is the variable z doing here? And the variable z there, this corresponds to the fact that in this interaction, you see I've written it to, from 1 to n. And you have to specify, once, you, once you're at the beginning of this chain, you have to specify how, what sort of boundary condition you're going to impose. And you can impose, for example, the periodic boundary condition, but there are more, there are more SU2 invariant boundary conditions. There's more ways to impose boundary conditions. And, uh, sorry, not, not SU2, but just, there's more ways to impose the boundary condition. And the boundary condition we're going to impose at the n plus first space so it's space so two, the n plus first copy of that. This is is identified with one z. This is what's called the quasi periodic boundary condition. So as you go around the circle, you get you get a phase factor in one of the in one of the entries. So, or n plus i. N plus I, I. And so now you can see why is this, uh, why this problem hasn't been noticed before, is that here, here we start at the point, here the, the cup product, so there's a, there's a new, there's a new product, so it's, uh, you know, there's a new product, maybe we call it star, Alpha beta star. This is alpha cup beta plus all capital of Z. So some series in Z. Which in general doesn't even have to converge. It's some in general some formal series. Some for, in, in our case it will converge to some very nice rational function, but it's some series in Z. In other words, this is somehow everything here happens around the point equals z equals zero. Whereas here, the initial, initial, the natural, when people think about this, they naturally first start with the, with the periodic boundary condition. So this, the, 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 the basic point is z equals one, which is like the worst possible pole on that other side. Uh, and so, uh, and in any way, this is when people in applications typically z is, is one or maybe root or at least has comp absolute value one. So that's uh, they get really phased. And, and the fact when z equals zero is really bad because it's not invertible. It's not invertible. Yeah. So you, you really need to um, 
to have a full uh, to see to see the, the identification you really need you, you you really can't see the identification by looking at the classical cohomology here the classical cup product here and some something there because there it's uh, Z equals zero is not really a value you can plug in there. And Z equals one is really not, not, so, not such a good a value to plug in here. And so this is, uh, and so this is, this is only beginning, so this is what I'd like to explain in this lecture, so at least in the first four lectures. And this is really beginning of the story in that, in that uh, and this is already, already this, Somehow the outline of the story already present in the work of Negrat Shadashiri, so that what's important about this variety, so this is an example, this is the simplest Nakajima variety. For, um, for any one of them, you can study its quantum cohomology. And what it will be correspond to? Well, this, there's quantum integrable system like this that can you, you can express in the language of quantum groups. This is, in some sense, what, uh, what the quantum groups were invented for. And so this is it's very remarkable that the quantum groups were also... You know, uh, the Nikras of Shatashtili, they are offsprings of, uh, in some ways, of this uh, Russian, even maybe some, well, I don't know, some, some Russian mathematical school. and. Uh, and uh, and uh, there's always this wonderful interaction between Russian tradition and Japanese tradition. Like the quantum groups were were uh, very much uh, born together at somehow at the same time here in Kyoto and maybe in Saint Petersburg. And so uh, and so this is there's some there's a whole machinery of quantum groups how to how to explain quantum integral system like this in terms of quantum groups. And uh, and well, like a general varieties. One of the reasons they were introduced is to have a geometric picture for representations here of quantum group. Um, and so, um, so now, um, <coughs> now I'll explain. And and another another very important thing that we see here is that. Uh, is is something very a very common theme in uh, in in this kind of part of mathematics is that here you have uh, some 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 vector space some representation of subgroup in fact realized uh, it's, a, it's a vector so you, you start in linear algebra start with vector spaces here it's realized not as some abstract vector space but geometrically as cohomology of some maybe k theory group of some variety so this is a sort of geometric realization of uh, of uh, a problem in mathematical physics. This is very this is very important, very valuable. Like for example, of course, for this uh, for this particular operator, its eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, they've been this is they've been computed many many years ago. But uh, this is essentially essentially work of Hans Bethe. So this is almost 100 years old. So it's like maybe 1931 or some some such some such. Uh, in some very old times, but but in general, if you have a geometric realization, maybe you'll we'll get to this in like lecture four. This really helps to find uh, b both the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors in, in problem science. But uh, so we'll we'll start maybe slowly, and I'll and um, so uh, so then uh, so we have uh, maybe we'll start with some variety x. And this would be, uh, for now, would be smooth, quasi-projective. Algebraic variety. Um, uh, so, Projective means it's closed in the projective space. Quasi-projective means an open subset of such. So EG for today, so EG for today, today will be, will be only look at projective space itself, or all the grass main. This projective space being the case of the grass main with k equals one. 
And then we, uh, we look at cycles in X, modulus sum equivalence. And so this could be this could be the homology of X. So this is or since we assumed it's smooth, there's not, well, not so much difference between homology and homology. Or you can look at Chow groups. Or so the, the, the setting I like the best is, is really is really the K theory group. Means means uh, if you have a, a closed sub variety in X. Then this, the functions on that variety means you take all functions modulo those that vanish. This is this a, a this is a, a sheaf of under this is a module under functions multiplication. This is such defines an element here. So this is maybe the best. This is I, mean, I like the best this sort of thing. So, so you can you can consider various spaces like that. And uh, and they uh, they are. Arena, what, so this is, uh, so how will operators, so here, so this, um, the, the, the setup of quantum mechanics is the space of space and some operators. And so how will some operators appear in the setting? So then, so this of so correspondences. So what's a correspondence? It's an object of the same kind on the product with X. With, could be a product with X some other variety, but um, but uh, um, but, uh, but let's for now let's take with itself. So so I you can take uh, homology classes or homology classes on the product with itself or elements. itself act on this. And so how does this, so let's say, how does a, a cycle on the product act here? Well, it's, a, so if I have a, um, a cycle on the product which I'll denote maybe M, or matrix, it's like a matrix. And so if I'd like to apply a matrix to some uh, to some element alpha. Well, what do I do? I I pull back. So there's there from this uh, from this product there are two projections, the first into the second factor. I pull back under the projection to the second factor alpha. I intersect with M, and I push forward under the projection to the first factor. So here I use the fact. So I'm intersecting cycles because I have I can intersect cycles. Is it because I, I have assumed that my variety is smooth? Or if I had a, like a homology class, then I could you know, a cup, take a cup product like homology class. And so what does this concretely? So for example, the example which is, uh, so EG, if X is a finite set, then the homology It only has zero dimensional homology, but so the homology of X is just really n copies of Z. Right? The homology of X cross X, these are really matrices of size n with coefficients in Z. Well, I could tens I mean I could 
I can consider some ring of coefficients, for example, this. And this amounts to the ordinary multiplication of uh, this will give you this, this, this ordinary. And similarly, if you understand how to multiply matrices, you immediately generalize this to how to multiply two correspondences. Another, another formula with which to compare is that if I have a, uh, so if I have a, a, a kernel, so if I have a kernel is a function, k of x, y, maybe x1, x2, is a function. X, it acts it acts by by an integral operator, so it means I take a function f of x, I send it to the integral k x one x two f of x two t x two. <coughs> Uh, this is the in, 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 in function analysis, or this is very important. But the, 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 this can be defined any time you have a any time you have a notion of product and, and pullbacks and pushforwards. You can define you can define uh, operators like this. So in this sense, in this sense, in this sense, uh, homology or K theory and so forth of the product, they really like um, their matrices of the shape x may be subject to whatever equivalence, whatever equivalence you impose your linear cycles in the first place. And so now uh, quantum multiplication is, is a deformation so, uh, a quantum product. quantum product in, um, usually people write it in cohomology, but it's fine. It's, uh, uh, it's an example. Rather, uh, not of this of this construction also, but in general, you can you can ask why stop at just two factors. You can have more factors, and then you have more complicated kind of tensors, right? So you can have so you, you really what you really want you want a map from um, what you want is a map from uh, a new product. You want like a cohomology of x, some new operator tensor cohomology of x some new product which called star to go to the homology of x. And this could be and this would be given to define this, you need you need a cycle in, in, in three copies of x, not, not two. And this is so this the way it's defined is this. So I'll just copy what I wrote here. So you take um, tensor, the, the, the quantum product alpha beta that will start with uh, the original cup product plus summation. So in general, you sum over all uh, is all um, 
Well, I already took, here already, we will see it, here I already took out the, the, uh, the uh, contribution of degree zero curve, so you sum over non-zero degrees in this form, so this will be h in general and h lower 2x z non zero. And in fact, the sum over only effective degrees, but we'll get there. And so then, in, in the case of Grassmannian or um, projective space, that group is z. So, so I can write one variable to the power z. In general, it's a multi-index. And then uh, I'd like a, a, an operator defined by a correspondent. So, so an operator times an operator. Defined by by the following cycle, by um, so I need uh, by the locus so inside of inside of the triple product I look at the locus of points that lie x one x two x three lie y on a curve of degree d. We'll, we'll define this more carefully in a second, but this is this is this is the basic. This is the basic. So if I have a so if I have a on a rational curve. So for every, for every, um, this parameterizes, among many other things. So if I have a, a curve, a rational curve, then its um, its fundamental class defines for me an element here, um, and then 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 I can. So this is this would be this would be uh, uh, this will go into this power of z, and then uh, th there'll be a correspondence, namely a triple of points that. More formally, if you want a more formal definition, why is this, why is this even a cycle? There is a, there is an evaluation map from here, from the moduli space m zero three bar. T, this, this moduli space is um, parameterizes is the following data. So an element of this moduli space is, uh, first of all, uh, uh, a, a curve of, at, at worst, nodal curve of, 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 of arithmetic genus zero. So I'll draw a picture. And I draw, um, so there's, one can, to draw a curve, uh, like a complex geometer will write uh, will, a rational curve. A complex geometer will will so maybe a complex geometer will draw um, uh, a collection of bubbles like this, and so it has let's say maybe some points. And so um, in algebraic geometry, it's more a tradition to draw a curve uh, as we go draw a real curve, so it's something like this. So it has three marked points. And so this is an example. More components here. Something like this. So this is this is at worst nodal. So arithmetic genus uh, zero means it's a union of rational components that form, a, there's no loops, it's form the tree. So this is uh, arithmetic genus zero and three mark points. Then, so this is my curve C, and my parts point P1, P2, P3. 
Then the next part of the data is a map. Maybe I'll draw in some color. The next part of the data is a map f to my x. And uh, this has to be a map of degree d, meaning f um, push forward the fundamental class of c equals d. This is an element in h lower two of x. Yeah? And this evaluation map it takes, takes uh, the f and sends it to the value at mark points so f of t1. So the fundamental feature of this moduli spaces is that this map, well, if x is projected, that map is just proper. We will be, uh, I mean, and so you can take, you think, uh, you can take, uh, in the situation with projected space of grass mean, you can take a fundamental cycle and of this moduli space, it pushes forward. In general, so this would be that, this would be that cycle that I'm talking about. In general, there are some, uh, some, uh, uh, some other cycle. I mean, some, there's something more complicated called the virtual fundamental cycle, which is defined in, uh, which is defined with gr great care and well, slightly differently in algebraic geometry or symplectic geometry. But, uh, but that's a, you know, for the examples here, you just forward. Push forward fundamental cycle. That's the and that is the cycle we want to use. Okay. So the, fun, the 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 remarkable feature of this <coughs> look at my notes. Right, maybe I'll say it, um, maybe I'll say it from the beginning is that is that the T star Grassmanian is obviously not is obviously not compact. I mean, it's not, but but all varieties we'll ever consider we will be will have the property and we will see it in easy consequence of very geometrically very easy to see that in fact the already the map that take just remembers one mark point is already that that's a proper map. So there will be no issues. Even though you know it's not compact, this, this will be this, this map will be proper. Even even the one with mark, one mark point is already proper. So um, so why is this? Um, So maybe, uh, maybe I'll, all uh, oh right, I forgot to say, I forgot to say uh, one thing, this, this, this has to be, uh, this, this map has to satisfy stability condition, means, means stability condition, that means that the um, two such things are, two such objects are isomorphic if, well, if, if there is a map between the domains that uh, isomorphism between domains of the map that makes the triangle, that, that makes the triangle. So in particular, for every map, for every such object, there is um, there's a well-defined group of automorphisms. Automorphisms of F, this is, uh, these are self-maps of the domain that commute with the map, commute to the map here. That, that not, not commute, but somehow. Self-maps that preserve the map to X. And so this this has to be a finite group. So this is finite. Oh, this dimension of this is zero. All right, that's what to say. Dimension automorphisms. F is zero. This is the stability condition.
Concretely, this means that any time, like in this, like this in this example, like if I look at this rational component, the component by itself, so if I have a rational point curve with one mark point, <coughs> then this has a two-dimensional group of automorphisms. Here I have a rational curve with two mark points and one-dimensional group of automorphisms. And so if I have something like this that has, then this, this cannot be contracted by the map F. In principle, some components of this curve can be contracted by the map F. But if it's a, if only those that contain at, mo at least three special points, like, like this middle one can be contracted, like this one can be contracted by the map F because it has four special points. And then another thing I want to say that this is the, uh, if I look at maps of degree, z of degree zero, This is just, so what, how can I possibly have maps of degree zero? Then um, the only possibility with the stability condition is to have the three-pointed, my three-pointed curve to be just really contracted to some point in X. The domain, if, uh, if my domain has any branches, that will have so I mean, if I had some branches like here, then there will have to be a component that has less than three special points. And so then would be uh, then since since it has to be a map of sorry, this has to be a map of degree zero. Since it has to be a map of degree zero, this is impossible. And so then the, that's the only that's the only opportunity possibility. So this this modular space is isomorphic to X itself. And this map is just embedding of the diagonal inside the triple product. And if you, you know, think of what the diagonal does inside the triple product, then it really does, what, what sort of correspondence, what sort of operator the diagonal inside the triple product define in this language? Then exactly this is, this is exactly corresponding. If, I, if, I, if I'd like to write the cup product, then it says, what is, what, how can I write the cup product if I, I take three factors, from two of them I pull back classes, intersect with the small diagonal and push forward, that's the cup product. This is because the definition of the cup product is that, is a, what's the definition of a well, kolmogorov alexander definition of cup product? If I look at the, if I take the, the outer product of, of classes and I, pull, and, I, and I pull back the diagonal, that's the definition. That's a, that's a, so this is really, this is, this gives you the space. And so uh, this, this quantum product is clearly commutative. Because that cycle in the triple product is clearly symmetric under permutation. Uh, and remarkably, Associative. This associativity is a simple. It's a simple. Uh, it's a simple property, but uh, but but uh, but remarkable. And why is this associative? It's because it's because what if I try? So if I take, I want to compute alpha, beta, and then gamma. Then in this language, so what is it in the language of correspondences? What is the what is the quadruple tensor that computes this this product? Well, I can in my I can have a so this this has to do with with maps when I have I have a curve that has two components. So one component can have Maybe I'll draw two different components in two different colors. So I have a curve with two components, maybe. Maybe it doesn't have to be so one component. 
three, three marked points. And this is, this is where I take my alpha. This is where I take my beta. And this is where, out, this is where it outputs alpha star beta. Means I, have a, I, I pull back with respect to this two, and I push forward with respect to this one. And then I have a curve with another, another curve, another component, can also have some stuff. But so this is here I take alpha and beta and I add gamma and at my third point I get the you know, I get my output alpha beta gamma. Is that clear? This this is When you, when you multiply correspondences, so you multi you're multiplying correspondences like multiplication of matrices. You have some index, like a lower, you know, sum over sum over indices. Means means here you you uh, we were pushing something forward and then pulling back again. And so this is means 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 I really have a, a rational curve which has a, which, which looks like this. And so this is the locus, and so this whole thing maps to X. So. so this sits inside M04 bar X. Or something, or d1, d2. So this has degree. This has degree d1, and this has degree d2. And then here the degree z. And this is the locus where. What is this? Where is this? This locus. Where, where, which one is this log? This is the, this is a, so a moduli space, an element, this is like a moduli space of four pointed curves. So T1, T2, T3. Four. And this is my, this is my T1, T2, T3, four. So I input, I take inputs at P1, P2, P3, and get output at P4. And so this moduli, the way this moduli space is constructed, this maps to the moduli space of just four-pointed rational curves, which is, which is isomorphic to P1 by the cross ratio. In this map, in this map, uh, when I once I forget once I forget the map to X, that some of the then some of the this, this bubbles become unstable. I have to contract it. So, like for example, this this would be like this particular this particular curve. I will have to this particular curve will go to to this curve. So this bubble will need to be contracted. This bubble will need to be contracted. So I just get P1, P2. In this, this, in this, um, in this language, what is the isomorphism? The isomorphism. What's the cross ratio? Is we take, uh, you know, I, mean, I take three points. I take them to zero. I can take them to zero, one, infinity, and some point. Maybe call it lambda. <coughs> if this is so, maybe this is p one, p two, p three, p four. And this is the case where uh, P4 became equal. So this is the case. This is in this language. When, when lambda got here, this means lambda equals infinity case. So this, this, uh, this product is computed from a cycle here, which is the 
fundamental cycle, the virtual fundamental cycle in general, intersected with the, with the pullback of a point under this map. So you, you impose, you can do, in other words, you fix, you fix the, the cross ratio of four points so that the fourth point in, in, and the third point, they lie on a separate component than the first and the second. Right, but in this picture of cross ratio, when lambda, when lambda approaches zero, one, or infinity, means these two points go on a separate component, like, like And then, now it's clear that if I take this, if I put these brackets in a different order, then all that's going to happen is, is some relabeling of this marked point. It just means I'm, I'm going to be pulling back a difference, but that means I pull back. It means I pull back a different point class. And of course, they, whatever equivalence relation you have, either homological or, or, or rational equivalence or K-theory, any two points on P1 are equal. And so, and so this, if you pull back one point under this P1 or you pull back another point, you get the same. So therefore, these two cycles, while not identically the same, they're equivalent under under whatever equivalence you, you want to impose. And so this means the, the uh, this, the, but this means my product uh, on homology, K theory, or whatever, this is a social, this is taken in two different orders. And so, um, finally, what I'd like to discuss is the uh, is gradient. And this is a, so this is, um, this is a very important notion in, in what is the dimension of the cycle. So this is, this, uh, usually your homolog homology is, is, is graded. So when you multiply homology classes, the degrees add. And so this would be, there's a similar statement here that one needs to know the dimension of that cycle. And so uh, what is this, so if I have, uh, what is the dimension? So if I have um, the tangent space, so what is the, so first look at the tangent space at some map F to M0, 3 bar, T. What is this? So um, what are the, what are the deformation of a map? Well, so for every point, so maybe, maybe I'll, I'll draw, so since I don't want to go, you know, be going back and forth this is from this, so I'm going to use my x. And I have a curve in x. So how can I deform this curve? So for every point in my curve, I can specify the direction in which it's supposed to move. So, so, so somehow this is, would be, this would be, uh, this is, this means sections, sections of the pullback, the pullback of the tangent bundle to X. This is, this is saying I would uh, like points to move in some direction. Well, this, 
I'm, I'm not interested in, uh, I'm only interested in the image of this map. You know, I was, I, when I was discussing this group, I was, I was moving out by the automorphisms of the domain. So there will be, so minus the automorphisms of domain. And I can cook it differently. I can first forget the marked points and then add the marked points back because this may be, a bit, may be more general. So I have n marked points or some number. Uh, what's, what's a good mark? What's a good number of marked points? Um, let's say n. Commercial is though that may plus the number of marked points. And this would be so. So my uh, domain rational curve, so this will be three. And then, um, and then uh, so this is for three, for, for M0, three, this will, this will cancel out. So this would be, uh, this would be something, when N, was, when N equals three, this, will, this part will cancel out. And so then the question, well, well how big is this? Well, so we can, uh, so now this is, this is sections, and this is uh, section, just algebraic geometers, right, H now, for, for sections. And how big, how big is the space? And then, uh, in general, it's like the hardest, the hardest question in algebraic geometry, how many sections a bundle has. Uh, but in this case, for, for the case of, uh, for the case of, uh, of um, for the case I, I wanted to discuss today, for the case of projective space and generally Grassmannians, this is, this is, this will be unchanged if I subtract the first cohomology. Of the pullback because this is zero for Kn minus one or in general Grassmannian Kn. And the reason it's zero is because these are homogeneous spaces. There are vector fields on it that generate the tangent space of this. This means the tangent bundle of the space is generated by global sections. It is enough sections to generate, to generate the bundle. And this is a pullback of a globally generated bundle, similarly globally generated. And so if I have a globally generated bundle in P1, it has no higher homology. So, in, so this, this thing will vanish. But in general, so in, in the way it's for general algebraic variety, such as the cotangent bundle, so we want to do cotangent bundle of Grassmannian. So cotangent bundle of Grassmannian, of course, with every tangent part, there'll be the dual cotangent. So then, so so whenever you have something positive in in the tangent bundle, in the dual part will be correspondingly negative. So in general, this will not vanish. And then, and then what you should consider is instead of the actual dimensions. You consider the virtual dimension of that space, and then this is this is so this is still so for for T star opinion this is this is is zero in general in general not zero, and then uh, and then this the uh, algebraic geometers and symplectic geometers they deal with this. From the differently, differently, slightly differently, algebraic geometers, they um, they say, well, this space, this space here, um, has uh, a nice uh, a deformation theory in that you can describe locally around each point. You need uh, you need uh, you need so many equations. Nice. 
to describe my modular space locally near a point. And, um, and then, so if you have, um, uh, so in other words, the, the, in a situation like this, there is a way to deal with this, like with excess intersection problem, namely, namely while uh, you have, you may have too many equations here, might be the case that they're not, they're not really independent. There's some dependency between this equation and the actual dimension of your moduli space is larger than this. So this, the virtual dimension is always, is always a lower bound for the actual dimension. And so this is because the, these equations may be, may be the may be dependencies between these equations. But there is a way to define a well-defined K-theory class or, or so on the moduli spaces, there is a way to define if you, if you know the, um, like for example, suppose you have a, a section of a line bundle. If it's, if it's a non-zero section, that defines for you a hypersurface. If it's a, in your variety. If it's a zero section, you can still define a hypersurface as the just just picks you know somehow just a, is, a, is a representative of the first joint class of your section. This is this is well defined in whatever uh, in whatever uh, theory is somehow defined well defined in Chow well defined in homology. And so uh, and so similarly here, if you know if you know if you know just, you know, what sort of thing your equations cutting out your, um, your moduli spaces represent, this gives you a way to define a well-defined well cycle on this moduli space, or the well-defined K-theory class on this moduli spaces. That will be a well-defined uh, up to whatever equivalence, in, up to whatever equivalence relation you consider, for example, well-defined as a homology class. And that will have this dimension, and you take the push forward under this map. So now we have to see what this thing, right. And so, and so this, so this, this cycle here will have this dimension. All right, we didn't finish the computing. So dimension. is the dimension of H naught minus H1? Well, <coughs> this is Riemann Roch. Says that this is the rank, so I need to write H naught minus H1. Same thing. <coughs> so this is by Riemann Roch. This is the rank. Plus uh, one minus F T. Oh, sorry. Not like this. It's degree. Right. Degree plus the rank times one minus arithmetic G. So this is arithmetic. And so this is, this is, we decided, this is equal to zero. And so the rank, the rank of the tangent bundle is a dimension of x. And the degree, what is this? The degree of, uh, the degree of a pullback of a bundle, this is just the pairing between the first churn class of the tangent bundle, which I'll abbreviate to the first churn class of x. First churn class of x is, is the first churn class of degree tangent bundle. You pair it with, uh, with my degree class. Right? Okay. And so the conclusion from this formula, so conclusion, quantum cohomology 
Decorated. Great that if we assign the degree of z to the d to be this number. In other words, if we give the variable z the degree c1, then, then this would be a graded product. All right, so this is in the remaining half an hour of this lecture. No, an hour, half an hour. Oh, OK, good. Oh, we're worried. Maybe, maybe there's some, maybe that was a little going too quick about this. Is that, is that, uh, maybe there are questions. Yeah. Anyway, there'll be some, um, I'm going to write some problems for, for the lecture and then uh, be good if, uh, if you haven't seen this before, it'd be good for to learn the material to uh, to work through this, and then um, I think so I think you can. I mean, it's certainly easy to verify. So if I have a cycle of a certain dimension, and this is this is if this variable has exactly that degree, then this operator will be. Of, uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, the ordinary multiplication corresponds to the to the small diagonal inside the triple product that has dimension x, and here the dimension here to the dimension x we have this, and so then it it, it um, you have to compensate to this number you have to compensate by the by assigning the variable here. For first computation, let's do quantum cohomology. Maybe first, what's the ordering homology of P and minus one? The ordering homology of the so P and minus one. So P and minus one, which is has homogeneous coordinates. I don't know W one W n. So this is this is uh, has a cell decomposition. So starts with C n minus one, where this is where W one is not equal. Well, whatever if you whatever you feel. So then a fine uh, a fine space of that dimension where this is not zero, and then C n minus two. And this is where W one is zero, and W two is not zero, and so forth down to a, a point, which is the point 0, 0, 1 in homogeneous coordinates. Shall we make a quick break or? No? You, you guys need a break? OK.
<laughs> Sorry, but it's not <laughs> okay. Maybe it's not super interesting, you know. <laughs> but uh, so so it's corresponding to this the ordering cohomology of projective space. Ah, oh, this is the reason with that coefficient. This is the so this is this is uh, the class of the closure here. So there's inside so w1 equals zero. This is a this is a hyperplane p minus two inside p minus one. So this is the hyper this hyperplane. The class of that hyperplane is H. So this is this cell corresponds to H, next cell corresponds to H squared, this cell corresponds to H n minus one, and the H to the n is zero. Maybe I'll write it. So maybe so. And so, um, so now, I look at, uh, so I compute the virtual dimension. What's the first? So the first churn class of Pn minus 1, what is that? Everybody knows? Raise your hand if you know what this thing is. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's compute it. What's the tangent? <laughs> so on, uh, on P, Pn minus 1, there is a uh, there is, so if you think of this as a um, Grassmannian of 1, n, then there's, this means there's a tautological sub-bundle. So this, on this there's tautological, tautological line bundle. Maybe I'll call it L, uh, which is a sub-bundle in the trivial bundle of rank n. Which is um, which is given by the fiber of the line is line itself, and so this is in fact in, in usual notation this is O of minus one. This is the 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 coordinates on your original space. They're the section of the dual bundle. Like for example, this is a section of the this W one is really a section of the dual bundle, section of O of one. And so then the tangent bundle. Tangent bundle to projective space. I don't know why I wrote tan, but uh, it's the tangent bundle. It's the same as t. What, what is it? What is it canonical? So if I look at, um, if I look, so I have a line. And what are the deformation of the line? Deformation of the line are just graphs of maps. So there's a. So if I have a cn mod l, so. Uh, uh, the deformation of a line is a graph of a map from L to here. So it's a home from L to C and what L. Maybe. So, so now if I expand this out, this would be, so this is a trivial bundle of rank N, and this is, so this is a trivial bundle of rank N, and this is my O of minus one. So I get, I get, so I get home from O of minus one to C n minus home from well I'll just write L for L because it's shorter than O of minus one O of minus one. Home from a line bundle to itself. This is a trivial bundle. This is trivial, and this is, and this is n copies of O of one. And so the first churn class, first churn class of projective space, 
this is the determinant, the tangent bundle. And so this is this is trivial, and this is and this is this is n copies of O of one. So this will be n n times the first term class of O of one. The first term class of O of one, this is this. Right? Because this section, this is the first term class of O of one. So this is so this is n times the hyperplane section. So, okay, so then this means that the virtual dimension of m bar 0, 3, dn minus 1, d, this is a dimension of x which is n minus 1. I want to make sure I multiply the numbers correctly. Yeah. So n minus 1 plus d times n. And so for, for d greater or equal than 2, this is number, this is greater or equal than uh, 3n minus 1, which is bigger than 3 times the dimension of x. Remember, we're looking for, in a triple product, we're looking for a cycle of this dimension. Well, there's no, for, for, for curve of degree bigger or equal to 2, there's just no, no place for this cycle. But that, but that uh, therefore, it's only, so what survives are only the constant map and the line. All the terms. All the terms with d equals zero and d equals one do not vanish. And this gives the ordinary cup product. This ordinary. And this is what's what's the map? What's the cycle that? So this is here. I'm looking for so here I'm looking for triple of points. So maybe this is my projective space. Yeah, minus one. And I'm looking for triples of points that line a line. So if I have um, H, like for example, if I have a, let's start with a point. So if I have like H um, n minus one star product H n minus one. So it's in other words, I want to. This is a class of a point. It's a class of a point. I'm looking for a star product. And so then this is, uh, so if this is, if this point is fixed and this point is fixed, and this remaining point is just, <laughs> the only, its only option is to, run, is to run along the line that joins these two points. Okay. So then, so this would be, so the cup product, so the cup product, you go like first the cup product, and that is zero, of course. Zero plus z times the class of a line is h n minus two. 
Yeah. Because uh, to take a quantum pro in the class of a point to class of a point, you get the line. So this is the right, this is the right equation. And in general, so if I take h n minus i star h n minus j. Then, then what will happen? I, uh, so here could be the here could be the uh, could could be the cup product, which is which means I'm gonna get h with respect to the cup product. They just these two things just add, so I get two n minus i minus j, and this is not zero. This this is not zero if i plus j strictly less than um, than uh, what than two n than n sorry because h to the n is already zero or you can get a term which is which is which is a line so then if i get so if I have uh, if I have something, this this is something of uh, yeah, how to say this is uh, this is like going to be. So if I have uh, something of dimension, if this if this runs in a linear space of dimension of a certain dimension, and this runs. In, uh, in a skew vector space of, of a certain dimension, that all possible, so this is like, so if this, if this runs in some vector space, and this runs in some vector space, then all possible joints of these two points will, will sweep a vector space of, uh, just uh, again, a vector space of a, of a certain dimension. And the dimension of that vector space obviously is, which I have, I'm just going to copy here, it's just going to be, um, so in fact, I have a, uh, Right, it's just this same um, minus n, so it's going to be n minus i minus j. And this is if uh, this is if i. This is the opposite. This is if i j greater or equal than that. So this is complete. This is complete description. So in particular, particular, this ring is still generated. This is this was a ring generated by one element H. And so after deformation, will still be generated by one element. You, you so the generator. Huh? Oh yeah, maybe this is right, 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 right. So this is this is less or equal, and this is and this is greater. Yeah. So thank you, thank you for. So in particular, so the generator generator H acts. In the basis one H H and minus one by by the matrix. So previously it was acting by this principal new potent like this. But now if it now 
if it gets to the the last one instead of instead of uh, giving you zero, it's gonna give you z here. And so it satisfies instead of so instead. Satisfies h to the n equals z. At least we can see we did this thing correctly because both of this is a graded equality. This has degree n and this has degree n, and so at least, at least this is correct. In other words, the cohomology when you deform, so this is for, so this is uh, when you you start with a uh, with a classical cohomology with just ring, just ring was generated by one nil point met and one nil point element, and instead you go to uh, so instead of a, having a, a point of thickness n, you can you can you go to this like about instead of having very very fixed thick point at the origin, you get this kind of rot of unity type of spectrum. Right. So now I'm going to go all... I don't... It's, it's, not, it's not difficult to compute... Similar for Grassmannians, but maybe I'll just state the answer, because we'll, we'll compute the more general answer anyway, so this is... So what is the, how does this story generalize for Grassmannians? So first, You similarly like the uh, the projective space is is the quotient of non-zero vectors by the scaling, the generalization of this Grassmannian. So this is the quotient. The way to think about one way to think about it, you look uh, n times k matrices. Instead of vectors, you look at matrices. Instead of them being non-zero, you look of rank. Okay. And so the span of the column of this matrix, that's the that's the subspace of k dimensional subspace in the n dimensional space. So this is, I'm confusing big and small n, so maybe I'll write n. And this is taking the module of GLK action, which acts in the columns of this. So this is Manian. And this has a decomposition, the generalization of this decomposition here. The one, uh, uh, one way to think about this decomposition, these are really the orbits. These are the orbits of the unipotent group formed by G. You take all unipotent mat lower unipotent matrices inside GLN which acts on this space. And then if you uh, it's elementary to see that this is any any these are the orbits. And the first it says whatever the first non-zero element is the orbit. And similarly for Grassmannian you can you you, you, you there's a similar like classical the Schubert decomposition, so the say unipotent matrices orbits unipotent matrices. There, um, there's a similar picture to that, namely you look at the, so I'll draw it like this. There you were looking for the first coordinate that's non-zero. Here you look for the first row of this matrix, which is non-zero. Let's say the first row 
of this matrix is, uh, say, zero, but then the next one is non-zero. Then by the action of GLK, you can make any non-zero vector to be uh, something like this, one, zero, zero, zero. And then for, and then after a while, so then, uh, then there could be the case that there's, there's some vectors that uh, are linearly, then the next vector is still linearly dependent on this. The, 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 could be that the next vector is, is not linearly independent on this one, so you know, something, something of this kind. But that this star, you can precisely, so I have a, my orbits of uniform matter, so that this, this star here I can precisely compensate by the action. I mean, the, the star I can make zero or any other number by the action of this element here. And then we'll come to the next, or well maybe, I'll, maybe I'll use, maybe I'll use this like red for this and yellow for this. Then there comes, then there will come a row where, which will be linearly independent of this one. And so then by the action of GLK again, I can make that row be the second basis element, something like this. And then if I get another row which is linearly dependent on the previous one, this means I'm going to get something of this form and some other thing of the other form. This is where this, this entries, I can make anything I want by the action of the corresponding unipotent. And then some next point will come back to this one. And so I think you get the picture. So, so this says that the, uh, the, uh, the orbits of this unipotent matrices, they're still affine spaces. And their spaces, they're, they're indexed by they index by the following data. The one way to index them is you take, you take this, this table. So this was uh, an n by k table. And you take this table and you throw out all the red stuff. You compress. And you get just, so this would be n. So they're, they're exactly the red rows, they give me a basis of a k-dimensional space, so this will be, a, this will be n minus k by k picture. That will look like 0, 0, 0, 0, now star, 0, 0, 0, two stars, 0, 0, 0, etc. And the way to think about it is, is, is to think of this as a is a partition, maybe in fact a couple of complementary partitions. So, really a staircase shape, something like this. That's a, um, where you can take either the zeros or the stars as a diagram of a partition. So, this is a partition. Partition lambda that fits inside. Uh, usually, it's usually the diagrams of a partition we would like to to draw them horizontally, so maybe this is my, maybe I'll take this. It's not super important, so maybe, maybe I'll, I like my lambda, so this is my k, so minus k. This is my lambda. So this has a cell decomposition index by partition that fits inside uh, k by n minus k box, so, and this is um, each cell is a uh, linear space of a dimension the number of boxes in this partition. And the um, This one description it gives you a uh, so 
gives you an edited description of the homology. Right, so this is, I've, uh, we take, uh, in this lecture, so if, uh, we have an algebraic variety, and we'll talk about the homology, we take a complex point with algebraic variety. So this is the cell decomposition into complex cells, in particular all the boundary maps are zero. So they, this gives you a medicine by homology. It's called Schubert cells. If you'd like a, a multiplicative decomposition, you you take um, so there's uh, it's it's going to be one of the homeworks problem to prove that the um, um, so um, so. To prove that the cohomology of Grassmannian is generated is generated by the churn classes. Of the, uh, so over the Grassmannian you have a tautological uh, so if I have a Linear space, you can call it the, the, the column span of this matrix is some linear space V. Oh, this is a B dimensional space. I, we were denoted previously L there for projective space. Inside CN. This is the, uh, the tautological uh, rank K uh, vector bundle. Uh, Churn classes of V generate homology. Well, in fact, better take V do because uh, by the same reason here, it's better to take the first churn class of O of 1 than O of minus 1. So maybe IE, uh, IE there's a surjection. Take, uh, even with integer coefficients, we take symmetric polynomials in k variables. So, churn, churn classes of a vector bundle of some rank k, you think as symmetric polynomials in k variables. And so then it's a classical problem, which again, we will solve. It's easier to solve a more general problem than this one, but it, it's true that the Schubert class class is represented by a specific uh, by there's a specific very nice representative for for uh, in this in this description so uh, for the Schubert for the closure of the Schubert class is the closure of the Schubert cell the same way as with the closures for projective space and this is <coughs> corresponds to sure function Lambda in this variables x1 through xk. And what this thing is is the ratio of two determinants. So you take the determinant. Um, so this is when you <coughs> when you write the partition, it's <coughs> it's uh, it's row length. <coughs> It's all like the usual unit line one of the two. So far, you take the uh, the determinant of x x i from the j plus k minus j divided by the product of So this is it's a classical fact representation theory that this is a polynomial because 
this is anti-symmetric in every anti-symmetric expression in X. If I have anti-symmetric expression in two variables, that's divisible by their difference. And so in particular, this, this uh, anti-symmetric polynomial is divisible by this anti-symmetric polynomial. And therefore, its ratio is a polynomial of this degree. It's easier to prove a more general theorem, which we'll prove later. And so now, now, uh, now the quantum cohomology. So, so the quantum cohomology. It's best described like it's best described just by saying that this is um, then uh, so maybe right right mm -hmm. then, sorry, sorry I don't want to jump over something I was neglected to say is that the in fact the kernel. Kernel of this rejection is the uh, I have a symmetric polynomials. Objective. And the kernel this spanned by sure functions that that don't fit inside inside my box. Lambda where where um, lambda does not fit inside. So the, this box is, is denoted traditionally as partition k repeated n minus k times, and uh, is an ideal that's generated. This is generated by uh, the sure functions corresponding to just one row. Where that row, uh, the length of that row, it's enough to take it uh, from um, from n minus k plus one up to n. This is some ideal in here, and this is just some particular set of general Obviously, this is if I if k equals one, uh, this this specializes to previous description of the projective space. And now, um, now the quantum cohomology. Is, has a remarkably simple description, namely all you do is the following. You look, you can think of this. Um, you can. Uh, so previously we were looking at uh, at uh, so. Um, So, so the spectrum for 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 projective space, the spectrum of ordinary cohomology will some will some big nilpotent some some nilpotent thing, and the spectrum of um, of uh, quantum cohomology uh, that was just uh, that was just n uh, n n so so I'll draw this picture so if I take. I take the spec of ordinary cohomology of projective space. So this is this is some big fat thing. And if I take the spec 
of quantum cohomology. So this has this. This is this is who this sits in roots of unity. I mean not the roots of unity, but this is like x. This is h to the n equals zero, this was h to the n equals z. Similarly, a similar thing will happen here. This is the map, the map, this this slightly complex, I mean, this, is, this, this, this map will, will have just description, you take axis, so we will, well, I'll give you the answer, and then we'll, we'll see. So this, you take, you take this set, maybe I'll take this set. Spectrum. I just will tell you the set, the possible values of axes. So this is, will be the sets of x1 through xk. Uh, each one of them to the power n, each one of them. This is, um, this, there's some sign which I want to get correctly. So this is minus 1 to the power k and z. And they are disjoint, distinct. So there's n choices for each x, but they have to be distinct. So there is, there is a n choose k isolated point. So this is, this is uh, at least the, if I'm telling you the spectrum has to be discrete, then at least the, the number of points there has to be the, uh, has to be the, the, the dimension of the space, right? So the, the dimension, the, uh, is how many partitions fits inside uh, in this box. The, the, the number of such partition is, uh, is n choose k. That clear because because the way one way to prove it is that so you can think of the partition as a uh, think of the like you think of this path here so like a path going here this path in total makes n steps and out of n steps k have to be vertical and n minus k have to be horizontal and so this is means out of n steps I have to choose k that go up so this is the number of this and choose k. And so, uh, uh, and so this is, this is a zero-dimensional set of this cardinality that, and this, this is a deformation of that, right? So this is, and the, um, the, uh, the remarkable fact about this is that on this set, the, uh, obviously, um, if I take, so if I take a sure function, so if I take S as a remarkable property, if I take a sure function, then this I can define, this can be defined can be defined for arbitrary, well, in general, you don't need to um, you don't need lambda i's to be ordered anything like this to be to define this function, right? So this can be defined for arbitrary uh, collection k, k tuples of integers. This uh, this is from its formal it's anti-symmetric in in the variables lambda i minus i or lambda j minus j. So this is this is uh, this expression here. It's uh, anti-symmetric in the indices i and also anti-symmetric in the indices j. And so in these variables, it's anti-symmetric. It means concretely that if I take, if I have a, <coughs> and then, right? If I have a like s, uh, you know. Say three zero. This is minus s. Well, let's see. So what's it going to be? Uh, so this is 
four, zero, four. Minus one four. Something like this. So in particular, if it has uh, if it has two values that differ by one, so if I have uh, if I have a if I have s of anything, and I have uh, like I don't know five and six. And this is zero. <clears throat> and then and then also on this it's also periodic with period <coughs> with period n. So also also depends only depends. On lambda. And well, up to a sign again, because up to a sign, if I on if I since since lambdas, if I take uh, each well up to a sign and the power of z rather, right? so maybe I'll write it like this. If I take so maybe I'll write what I want to write here. That if I take. S and there is some entry. I take lambda i. And this is lambda i plus n. And this is minus z to the power k s lambda i. Because this will be each one of my variables raised to the power n gives me my, my, my minus so minus one to the power sorry minus one to the power k minus one times that. In other words, if I want to compute now in this ring, it's, it's in fact in some sense easier than I compute ordinary way. So I get some expression in sure functions. Then, then using this rule, I can always, so any expression in sure function, I can always bring it to, to uh, maybe, maybe, maybe better to think about like this. So if I take the link, the, I take the collection of integers if I take this set lambda i or oh, lambda j lambda j plus k minus j this is a k tuple of distinct points for for a partition. If lambda is a partition, then this is a this is by the same argument because what are these numbers? These numbers are the positions of the ver the times when I take this vertical step. And so this is a k tuple of distinct points of um, in in uh, zero through um, n uh, n minus one. And so this is this is says that every time I can associate uh, I can associate a sure function to a k tuple of not necessarily distinct points. So in principle can associate sure function defined for any or any k tuple of points in, in Z. But then it's it, if the, if some points repeat, then this is zero. 
and if it's 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 like this, and if it's uh, if they don't fall inside zero through minus n, then I can use this rule to make them fall inside inside zero through n. This inside bar it means the computation in the string are gonna very uh, take the following thing. You multiply in the usual way, and then you use the uh, these rules to reduce. This is what's uh, uh, I, uh, this is what's called uh, like rim hook algorithm or something, you know, some name like this. I think um, there there are many proofs in the literature, but uh, we'll we'll give uh, and right. And so, uh, but we'll we'll see this as a special case of of of. of uh, so the, the quantum cohomology for T star Grassmannian strictly generalizes quantum cohomology for Grassmannian. So we'll see this rule as a as a special case. And so uh, now to right, if I think I want to um, So as is, 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 is an example, let's see what this, um, what this thing says for um, the um, Maybe, let me just state that the results of the new relation, in other words, equivalently, you can, the new relations, Are that the um, this short function is still so it's still zero because if I take so if I put this so L so what does this corresponds to where L so so this this uh, were this corresponds to what? This corresponds to my my set here is um, is like this. It's like L plus K minus one, and then we get um, uh, and then all the others are zero. So K minus two. Zero, one, zero. And so there are um, two cases. So this number, so L, L in my notation is, is greater or equal than N was sitting between, between N and N minus K plus one. So if I, um, If I, like for example, if L is n minus k plus 1, then in this expression I'm going to get n. And uh, module n, this is going to be the same as 0, so I get two repeated things, and that's therefore 0. If I, so, so this, I, we get, so if I get, we get, we get two repeated indices. Right, I mean, in this, in this, in this range of parameters, it's clear that the only time I can get module n something different, uh, since this uh, is that, um, is then with this number l is exactly n, right? Because then I get module n, I get k minus 1. Otherwise, I get something which I already previously had. I apologize, the basic commutatorial point is too late in the lecture. It's, it's not, it's not, okay. so. So this is, <coughs> this said that this thing it's, so this, uh, this thing, so maybe I'll erase, maybe I'll copy this here, so my, my, 
my lambda i minus omega on the j plus k minus j. This is the set L plus k minus 1 and k minus 2, so forth, and 0. And so this is 0 if uh, minus k plus 1 less or equal to n. Um, and let's strictly n. And then if, if L is n, then by that rule, I get minus 1 to the k minus 1 times z if L is equal to n. Because then you get the sure function by this periodicity, you get the sure function for the empty partition, the sure function for the empty partition is 1. Looks like I've uh, so maybe to summarize. To summarize, uh, what would be the description for the um, What would be the description for a quantum cohomology of the uh, cotangent bundle for Grassmannian? Something very similar. So it's again will be generated by some universal expression. So there will be some map like this. And, and the only question is to describe, and so it's described with the kernel of that map. And the kernel of that map, the, the, the way this, uh, the way this, uh, uh, the uh, the quantum the spin chain is going to come in is that the kernel of that map this will be the beta equation for so so this um, in in uh, in this quantum integral model there's um, the search for eigenvalues consists of two parts first you look some you make some ansatz means ansatz is just a substitution translated from German, means you, you, you try some form of the eigenvector, depends on some parameters, which are, which are, which are, it's called, they're called beta roots, and they, uh, they so this will be, for a little bit k of them, and so this will be this x1 through xk, and then, um, and then this eigenvector, this, this ansatz for the eigenvector is actual eigenvector, if this xk satisfy um, some equation. The algebraic equations known as bit ansatz equations, bit bit equations, and so uh, and so this is somehow the basic observation. This was the starting point. Actually, you can compute. I mean, this uh, it's not hard to compute the spectrum of. Um, it's not very hard to compute the spectrum of uh, quantum cohomology from abstract principles, especially for T-star Grassmannian, and you see that these equations. Equations that, uh, well, I didn't, I guess I, I kind of wrote the equations down, but I gave you the solutions of the equations. But, uh, but, uh, but you can write equations, and you see they coincide with these beta equations for, for the spin chain. And, uh, and then you can, this is like, the, this, is, this, this was the, the starting point. And uh, we'll see it like this later, and so in particular, then you'll see, you'll see this description of that I've presented here without proof. All right, now I think I've exhausted my two hours and I'll stop here for today.